Okay, as we move forward, okay, I think I had explained that to um, Ms. Faith. I, I think she asked how we're going to approach these next few days, okay? Um, we keep moving forward in here. And what I want you to think about here, I got these papers, okay? And I cannot... I can't record a grade for papers that I do not have, okay? So this is exam part two, okay? I think we're missing one, no, two out of everyone involved. I, I already spoke to uh, Lane, so um, we're not on Zoom right now. So the short answer questions, okay? Do I need to read off who I have, or do you know for a fact whether you have or have not turned them in? Which do you prefer? Okay. Is anyone praying to the science gods? I hope I hear my name. I'm pretty sure it's just Sandra. Okay. Austin, this is short answer questions. Noah. Kelby. Gavin, Addison, Xander, and Faith. Now, it might have been emailed because you were at home, and that's quite possible. Because I do remember seeing some of those that were sent in, so chances are it's done. So, if you have heard your name there, or if I didn't address and look at you personally, well then you may have a little catch-up work to do, all right? And whether you do or don't do the work, that is a personal choice. For those of you who did do the work, why did you choose to do it? Is it because we told you to or? Uh, that's probably a good motivation, yeah. Because one of the things you're going to find out when you get out on your own in society, we've said this before, if the boss tells you to do something, what do you probably, no, I'm just not going to do that. And maybe it's said, maybe some people have that mentality. Um, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Okay? That's not the approach we want to have you take. Okay? Chances are pretty good. You can look up and down this hallway any of the staff members, we do want you to pass, believe it or not. I think you may agree with that. Then, then for the part two, you were correct with that part. Okay. Um, with that, I've got Kelby's. I think I'm missing a couple here. Noah's, Dawson's, Austin's. Okay. Um, they may have been in a separate, separate pile here. Because I thought I had more than that. And there again, yours is probably submitted through an email. Chances are it's done. Okay? And then for you two, yeah, you may have to re-explore that. And then yourself as well. It's, it's a choice. You, we do it or you don't. I mean, if you were asking you to do it, if you choose not to, that is a choice that you're choosing to make. Okay. All right. So... What can you tell me about the arachnids? Well, so do insects, but we want arachnids. Yes, they would have book lungs. That's right. Uh, not what you would really think, because a, a shell, I would think of something that's maybe composed of chalk or calcium carbonate or something to that effect. These have, is more so of a protein matrix called chitin, and that's why when you step on some of these insects, you hear that characteristic crunch, okay? Now, would you hear that with spiders too? Uh, not to a certain, to a certain extent you would but it's not the same type of composition as what a shell would be. But yes, they still do have an exoskeleton. Body segments. They only have two. Okay? So for those of you who put a belt on or the midsection, that's called a specific structure in spiders. Starts with a P. No. 
call it the, the pedicel, okay? And what are the first set of appendages off of a spider called? The most anterior side or anterior portion. Is it what? Anterior is the front. Well, when you say grabber things, you're talking pedipalps, and it's not pedipalps. Those are the second set. We want the first set. The fangs. The fangs, that's right. Or chelicerae. Okay? Now, okay, so that's the order arachne. Who is another arachnid? Scorpions. Because tarantulas are still spiders, okay? That would be the order. We'd, we've only discussed it once. And we've only wrote it down once. What is the order for scorpions? I said, if you get this wrong, say that again? Scorpionosis. We'll, say, we'll give you that. Scorpionida, okay? That's how we know you're dealing with that of the scorpions which is a separate order, but still of the class, okay, arachnids, because the order for spiders is arachne, then the lesser common ones are acari, which are your ticks and mites, okay? And that's going to be something similar. You're going to have to be able to describe the difference between that class, okay? Spiders, scorpions, ticks and mites, okay? Spiders and scorpions have two body segments. Ticks and mites only have one. Walking legs. Who has the most walking legs? Spiders. Eight. Okay. Scorpions. How many walking legs do they have? They've only got six, but yet they still have eight appendages. What are those other two? Kelopeds or pinchers, if you want to call it that. That's, uh, that's pretty good. It gave me a cruel chuckle. Uh, okay, and then uh, of course ticks and mites only have one body segment. All right. So with that, we left off. One of the aspects I would certainly like to know is where are we at with some of this venom research? So this was probably recorded. Around 2003, maybe? Okay. Okay. One of the things that is, is applicable, I think, whether it's from venom or many other different types of disorders that may lead to internal bleeding, okay, at the capillary level, that's the very smallest blood vessel there is. If you see blood on the surface of the skin, okay, whether it's because of a cut or because of uh, envenomation or a sting even, why is there blood at the surface? There's two reasons. One, very tiny blood vessels called capillaries may have been cut or punctured. What might another one be? Uh, we already talked about that. Say that again. What about the bloodstream? Okay, what is thin? The, not only the blood, because that's what some of these toxins do, but it starts to leach out of some of these blood vessels. And that's why you see blood pooling outside the wound. Ebola does uh, something. F that just totally uh, liquefies the blood. And it liquefies it so much that it starts to pour out of the uh, capillaries. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I don't think so. So, and I know there's a lot of good distractions going on, but as, we, as we've said many times before, we, we still want, well, maybe you don't want to, 
we still should keep moving forward. Of course, that is what we're doing. possibly see a problem with that? Have you ever heard of the term robbing Peter to pay Paul? <laughs> robbing Peter to pay Paul. What that means is, for instance, let's say, let's say you're running a repair shop. We'll just use your, you as an example. Okay, uh, You're renting that shop. Yet also there is some sort of expansion that you want to do. So what do we do? Do we pay the landlord or do we pay the bank? Well, you might rob Peter. Well, not it's metaphorically speaking. You may take the money you're going to pay for the rent, pay for the expansion. So sometimes what can happen is one problem can lead to a bigger one. Okay? So if we are importing these insects, could there be a, po a possible problem with that? Yeah. You might lower the number of fire ants, but now what's going to happen? Now you have all these flies around. So that's kind of like a Rob Peter to pay Paul type uh, decision. Now whether uh, the life cycle of these flies is quite short, that I, I really wouldn't know. But sometimes I think that's probably how we try to treat some of these, um, I want to say infestations. It would be nice if there was an actual bird that was a predator for um, ash, uh, sure. what do you call those, uh, in, uh, um, there, was it green ash borers or, sure. they, they infect the ash trees, but I can't remember what, there's something ash borers, but anyway, it'd be nice to have a natural predator for them, but then once you have the predator to take care of the prey, well, then maybe you have a problem with that predator. And maybe that's something similar that could be happening here. But what would happen if you saw some of these murder hornets up here? Have you ever heard of them? Um, that would be awful. I would catch one and release it in the school. From the U.S. Agricultural Department, thinks that the flies can give hope to people like Patty. Once we release them, they'll spread naturally, they'll be permanent, they'll, they offer the possibility of permanent, wide-scale control across the entire landscape. Nothing else has that potential. Until the flies have established themselves, there's only one thing that protects people like Patty from another deadly allergic reaction. Ironically, it's the same venom that almost took her life. Small controlled doses of antoxin increase the production of a molecule which prevents the venom binding to immune cells. 
are just getting the shots every four weeks. And after a couple of years of that, they're going to test me, and there's a hope that I can be normal again. It could be four years before Patty and her family can fully enjoy their warm Florida home. for Bob. 
Bobby Joe. Michelle and her family face an agonizing two-hour drive to Kansas City. Bobby Joe's Bible signs, her blood pressure and pulse appeared normal. She seems like it hurts to lay on her back. She not want to lay down. But she was disoriented and the bite area on her back had spread. We didn't know at the time that she also had been bleeding internally uh, in different areas from the clotting abnormalities. In effect, she lost probably about half of her blood volume in one way or another. Pediatric toxicologist Dr. Gary Wasserman consulted on Bobby Joe's condition. But in Bobby Joe's case, uh, the worst things happen quickly and progress very rapidly. Uh, even though it is very difficult to manage and reverse some of those effects, because there is no true antidem in the United States, uh, I had assumed that uh, we could counter most of the problems and support someone until that body could heal themselves. By the time he shall arrive, Bobby Joe was in serious distress. And she's sitting in the bed, and the nurse always um, asked her to lay down and relax
with placid animal, but the venom is, is potentially quite dangerous to humans and like anyone. Okay, we'll go ahead and stop there for today. It's too early to go out to the hallway, so just kind of hang tight. We will catch up to you uh, next time.